Right, Paul, today we're making passata fatto in casa. You've probably all heard of passata, but there is a huge difference between homemade and bought passata. It's a very, very old tradition, almost in every Italian household. Now, the only thing we can't do here is grow our tomatoes, but we are very, very lucky because we have someone who grows tomatoes in Cheshire, which isn't very far from here, and he kindly lets us have all the ones that, bless them, are overgrown, not the right size for all the supermarkets. But I consider myself very fortunate to acquire these beautiful fruit. Now, what to do with them when in season? Look at that, Paul. <laughs> now, that tomato is speaking to you. Use me. Look, it's got a little face. How could you possibly put that in the bin? With a big nose. It's Mother Nature at its best, saying, I'm just as good as everybody else, even though I've got a big nose. <laughs> it's beautiful, you know, and we're going to use it. We're going to treat it just like all the other tomatoes. The first thing we have to do, Paul, is make sure they're clean and washed. Even though insecticides aren't used, I still like to wash them. Now, Rosa, Rosa is here and she's taking any bad bits off the tomatoes, uh, the stalks and everything. So what we've got is pure washed tomatoes. One of the things in making passata is it's very, very difficult to make it on your own. You need help. In Italy, back home, or at my mum's, because she still grows tomatoes in this country, um, you need help. So traditionally, friends and family help. Here today, I have my sister Rosa here on my right. I have just behind you Danny, who helps me make just about everything. He's sterilizing the jars, ready. And also because he's got strength and I haven't. Danny, can you put the first bowl of tomatoes in the big pan? The second thing we have to do is get them blanching. We just need to just warm them up a little bit. Got it's all right, Sorry. just pour it in. Just get the whole thing and just chuck it in if you can. It's washed. Oh, come on. Don't be a sissy. Oh. Thank you. Then. Right. Are you doing them all, Jessica? We're doing them all today, yes. Because they've been sitting for a couple of days. They've got to be at the ripest. So, and we also check for any missed bits. We don't want anything impure going into this. It's got to be just pure tomato pulp. And I'll tell you one thing. You can only tell the difference when you taste it. My sister Rosa makes Italian food all the time because her husband's Italian, her family's Italian. She refuses to buy home um, bought passata. There is something about manufactured passata that will always be different to homemade. If she ever runs out of homemade, because traditionally we make it for the whole year, but if she runs out, rather than buy bought passata, she will buy a tin of plum tomatoes and actually extract the pulp herself to achieve that difference. It's not as good as when it's made fresh, but even that is better than the bought version. You can use it for curries, pizza topping, pasta sauces, chilies. Even, even an Italian stew, uh, or say an English stew with, you know, gravy-based stew or casserole, you just add a little jar of pure tomato passata, and it makes it, it finishes it off. Uh, the main reason for making it this way is that it's very, very versatile in the home. It's a little bit more expensive than the shop bought, but as you can see, there's a lot of work involved. As far as I'm aware, nobody else makes homemade passata fatto in casa 
like we do. What we're doing here is we're just blanching them. Um, we're not actually cooking them, we're just softening them slightly so that we can extract the pips and the skins from them. I'm just going to wait for these to go down just a little bit and then I'm going to add the last log. Oh, thanks, Danny. Danny, can you just help me give this a stir, please? I can't quite reach. Give it a good stir and see if we can get the last lot in. So, as you can see, you need a lot of tomatoes, and that's why it's pure. Passata fatto in casa. Oh, lovely. There's a lot of tomatoes in there, Paul. It takes one of these full of to fresh tomatoes, that's just over a kilo of fresh tomato to make half a litre of pure passata. It cannot ever be the same price as a manufactured passata, but it's well worth the little bit extra in price. It's half a litre, so it's just over a kilo of fresh tomatoes to make that. Just come and do it. Cioè, da dice le You must always bless. When you're making homemade food, you have to bless it. Oh, yes. So have you blessed you it? Bless, yes. Le benedica. Benedica. It's amazing how wrong it goes when you don't do that. We are draining them tomatoes out of the pan and then into another drainer at the sink to extract some of the water. So if you can do that bit, Danny. All right, you carry on with that. And this comes over here. And we're going to drain them so that we take most of the water out. Rosa, are you doing it? You seem to know what you're doing more than I do. Wonderful, I'll give that back to Danny. Right, yeah. what's going on here now is we've got to take all as much the of the water out. as possible. All the water out. All the water. Because we don't want water, we want as thick a passata as we can get. So the more water we take out of it, the better. We'll squash them if we have to, won't we, Rosa? Yeah. Squash them if we have to. Now they're just nicely blanched. How's that? Beautiful. That looks yeah. just about ready. Yeah. If it's too dry, then um, it's not good either. So you have just got to get it just right. You've got to get all the juice of the tomatoes, really. Yeah. Right. We'll start with it. We'll leave this one draining for a bit. Yes. And we'll start the next one, because the longer it's draining, the better. So do you want me to move that one along? Yes. Do you move that one along? and we'll pour the next one in here. So you fiddle with that one, and I will try, oh, that's hot. Ah, oh, lovely. Oh. Right. Right, Paul, as you can see, we started with 15 half boxes of tomatoes. That's eight very full boxes of tomatoes. And as you could see, there was a lot of tomatoes. This is almost about 50 kilos of tomatoes we started with. Now, to just get the pulp so that you've got the best passata, you have to go through this process. I'm now going to start the next process, Paul. Um, and we're praying that the machine works. These machines can be very temperamental. I always keep a manual one at hand, just in case anything goes wrong because I don't want to be left with 50 kilos of tomatoes was it? 
Whilst yes. Yeah, 50 kilos of tomato to waste. We pass this late. No, the smaller one, that's too heavy for me. Thank you. Right, here we go, Paul. In. In. Right, we ready? <laughs> oh. Are you going to help? Go on, feed it in. Now, we continue with this process until all the last tomatoes are finished. And then we go on to the next process, which is jarring them. Can you see all that, the rubbish? All the rubbish is coming out one end. And the lovely juice, beautiful, nice thick juice is coming out that end. After this process, Paul, the only thing I'm going to do to it is add a bit of salt. I like to add just a little bit of salt. One, it brings out the flavour of the natural fruit, and two, it's ready for use in whatever you want to use it for. Pizza topping, curries, uh, fish sauce, English sauce, casserole stews, Indian, Chinese, Whatever you want to make a sauce, a good sauce, you use passata. Right, Paul, the last but one process. Wonderful sterilised jars. And we've got to fill them. Hopefully Dan will lid them because he's got more strength than me. He's just finishing off sterilising the lids. And we have to fill them up to a certain level before we... Uh, preserve them. So, off we go, Paul. The Benedicta, remember always to bless it. I'm now going to fill the jars with this beautiful passata. I've tasted it. It tastes absolutely beautiful. It's sweet. It's not acidic at all, this batch. Um, and I'm hoping that Danny will be there lidding them for me. And then after that, we have to reboil the lidded jars, each individually wrapped in a tea towel, in a huge pan of water in order to preserve them. They're, they're going under boiling water. The reason we boil them is to preserve the fruit inside. It's a very ancient way of preserving fresh fruit for the following year, just like jam or vegetables or anything else it will keep. Now, traditionally, this year's produce is used all year round and you get a new, um, a new produce the following year. But just in case the produce isn't um, very good one year or something like that, you still need to have your passata for the next year. So what I found is that this passata will keep more than 12 months. It will probably keep for up to three years. I know that I have a jar that my mum made, which is 10 years old, and I still have a batch of it that I can use. So for me personally, it's a foolproof method of keeping the fruit extremely fresh. And this, my friends, is passata fatta in casa. But I shan't mind if you call it passata. It's part of my Prodotti Artigiani range, which is being sold in my shop on St George's Road. I hope to see you there very soon, but for now, arrivederci.